Hi, it's a beautiful Sunday, the 15th of October, and today is the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I know you have been blessed with a homely a sermon by one of our wonderful priests scattered across the globe. Permit me to share these words with you after some friends have been asking me my opinion on the gospel of today, the parable of the wedding feast, especially towards the end when the king comes in and sees a man without wedding garments or wedding clothes. Friends have been asking me, so father, what's your opinion? Was he naked or he was not wearing the suitable attire or clothing or apparel? This is my opinion based on the original Greek. The word translated clothing, apparel, appears eight times in the New Testament. And out of these eight instances, seven are found in the Gospel of Matthew alone and once in Luke 12. Do not be concerned about what you you, you be clothing yourself with because you value more than, you are worth more than the birds in the sky the flowers in the fields. Then the other seven instances, the first is in Matthew 3, 4. John wore a clothing made of camel's hair. That is how Matthew describes John's appearance or John's apparel. Of the seven instances in Matthew, I want to draw attention to these four. The first in Matthew 3, 4, Matthew describing John's apparel, that John was clothed in Camel's clothing. Then in Matthew 28, 2, when the women went to the tomb to anoint Jesus, scripture says in Matthew 28, 2, an angel of the Lord came from heaven, removed the, the, the stone, he sat on the stone, his appearance was lightning, and his clothing, and his clothing, so you read Matthew 28, 2, his clothing was like the sun. So at the beginning of his gospel and at the end of his gospel, Matthew gives us clothing, an idea of clothing. John's clothing makes us identify who he was. Pay attention. Matthew says John's clothing was made of camel's hair. It was not made of elephant's hair. It was not made of lion's hair because John was in the desert and the camel was an animal suitable in the desert. So it was not surprising that John's clothing was made from camel's hair. It is a sign of identification, his clothing. Then in chapter 28, verse 2, the angel whose appearance was lightened and whose clothing was the sun is also coming from heaven. So his appearance, his clothing identifies him. His clothing is like the sun because he's coming from the skies as John takes his dwelling in the desert. So he's identified with an animal in the desert. The angel is coming from heaven. So his clothing is described as like the sun. Pay attention to these. Matthew 3, 4, Matthew 28, 2. The other two instances are in the gospel of today. Matthew chapter 22, verse 11. You see, dear friends, so the king came in, everything seemed normal. Because when he sent the servants on the second instance to go to the street corners and bring all those people they, they could find, Scripture says they brought in the just and the unjust, good and wicked people alike. Don't be surprised. It is a wedding feast and good and bad people are brought to the feast. Why then should the king sack somebody without wedding garment? That is the crux of the, uh, of the, of the gospel. That is where I want us to focus. The good and the bad are brought. Pay attention. Let me pick that verse to you. You see, he says, he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whom you will find, whomever you will find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike. Pay attention. The king was not worried that they brought in bad people. The king was not worried that they brought in good people. The good do not need conversion. It is the bad. So the king knows that under his feast, under his roof, the bad will have the opportunity to convert. What about this man without wedding clothes? The word translated into wedding clothes in Greek is enduma. Enduma. In the Greek, is from the word enduo, which, which means to sink into, to sink into something. So the interpretation is, 
What had this man sunk into? So you have to sink into something. You have to be identified with something. As John had sunk into Camel's clothing because he in the desert, he's in the desert. As the angel in Matthew 28 2 has sunk into a description of the heavenly body, the sun, because he's coming from the sun. He's coming from the heavens. But here is a man who has not sunk into anything without a wedding garment. So he cannot be described as part of the bad or part of the good who were invited. So this man can be described as amorphous. He's without form. He's without form. Pay attention. Till the king came, everything seemed normal. Those who went out to bring those people did not question the man why he was without wedding garments. The servants did not have the audacity to ask him where he, why he was without wedding garments. It is the king who asks him where, why he was without wedding garments. It is the king who asks us, why till now we have not sunk into something to be identified? It is God alone. You are amorphous. Friends, this is the time God has given us to be identified as his sons, as his servants, or as servants of the enemy, the fallen angels, and his host. Revelations 12, 4. One third of the host. John describes the angels as stars. Revelations 12, 4. One third of the stars were cast down by the devil. So you have to identify yourself with that word in clothing apparel. As John identifies himself in the world and with Camel's clothing, as the angel identifies himself with a clothing like the sun. Now, permit me to present clothing as a symbol of identification. Friends, I am a Catholic priest. When you see me in a cassock with a collar, quickly you are there, oh, that is a priest, a man of God. When you see somebody in a t-shirt with his name written at the back with a number, a figure, 9, 10, 11, you say, wow, this is a footballer because he's in a jersey. When you see a security officer, for those of us who come from, who come from Africa, West Africa, with black with white stripes, you say, this is a police officer. You identify a military officer with his apparel, with his clothing. You identify a fireman or woman with his clothing. So our clothing becomes a symbol of identification. This clothing also becomes a symbol of status. You identify who a king is by his clothing and who a servant is by his clothing. You can identify a president with his clothing and a normal citizen with his clothing. You can identify a colonel in the army with his clothing and a superintendent with his clothing, a corporal with his clothing. Friends, clothing us can also identify us whether we are male or females. When I step out in Brazil, you might say, oh, this is a female. Our clothing identifies us. Our clothing has also identify where we come from. When you see me with winter boots, or you need heeled clothes, woolen clothes, you might say, oh, this guy is coming from Europe or America. Because in Africa, the weather is not cold, so you don't need these heavy clothing. The clothing becomes either a symbol of our status, the place of origin, our class in society, our gender, our age. There are certain clothing that are fit for children, others are fit for adults. Here is somebody who is without a word in clothing. He has not sunk into anything. And I say, pay attention. So the king made appearance. Nobody had questioned him about his appearance, his apparel. It is the king who asked him, why have you two sunk into something? And you are still amorphous. Friends, in Genesis 3.21, when Adam and Eve, our first parent, had sinned and they were being driven out of the, 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 the garden, they made clothing for themselves from fig trees, leaves. It was not going to last. So God was sacrificing an animal, an animal. And in Genesis 3.21, God made clothing from the skins of animal. So if it was a fashion center or a place where we sell clothing, how would you have classified God's shop, clothing shop, where he made this clothing for Adam and Eve? I will call it Eden's Gallery. Eden's Gallery, where God made clothing fit and durable 
for Adam and Eve. Whilst they had made fig leaves who were not going to last, God made them animal skins, Eden's gallery. In Isaiah 61 10, the prophet Isaiah sings, I rejoice greatly in the Lord because he has clothed me with a garment of salvation. The Lord Jesus himself is the one who clothed us with garments of salvation. He makes us sink into himself. As a bride adorns himself with a jewel, he continues, that's why Isaiah 61 10. If it is Christ who is clothing us again, how will you caption this fashion shop of Christ? The divine sees us. In Matthew 3 4, John the Baptist in the wilderness had a clothing made of camel's hair. How will you describe his own clothing? The desert collections. John is identified. In Matthew 28 2, the angel's clothing was like the sun. How will you describe this angel's fashion shop? Angelic designs. In Revelation 3 verse 4, the Lord says, he speaks to the church in Saudis. There are some of you who have not sold your garments. They will walk with me in white garments. How will you describe this fashion shop? Touched by the Lord. And the description in Revelation 19, 6 and 9 concerning the apparel of the bride. The wedding guest is ready and the bride has been prepared. God touches his bride. Divine creations. All these symbols or names I'm giving is to draw your attention to the identification God gives us by how we are dressed or how we appear. Dearly beloved, till the king comes, we can decide to be amorphous. We can, to be, we can decide to not identify ourselves with any Christian group, to be not practicing the faith. But the time will come when you cannot remain amorphous or asiphalous without head. You must be identified, whether as a son or daughter of God, as Joshua declared in Joshua 24, I and my family will serve the Lord. Identified, be identified with a wedding garment. Sink into an apparel and declare yourself that I am for the Lord. I want to participate in this wedding feast. The peace of our blessed Lord be with you. Bless a family member, a friend with this message. Let's identify ourselves with God's garment. Let's sink into God. And God will take care of us. Have a blessed week. Amen.